here we are in Italy. This is Ken Brandt, and he's an artist. Except mine's so what we did on this day is we drove way up into the hills, the mountainous region of uh, just outside of Pantasieve, which is kind of like, um, I would say that's northern Italy. Uh, Florence uh, and Ponte Sieve, those were in the northern areas of Italy. And we found this beautiful little waterfall up in the forest area. Um, there was a lot of people up there, uh, like tourists actually, um, checking out the area. So we stopped and we saw this and we decided this would be an excellent, uh, excellent area to paint, do some plein air painting. So we set up there and uh what you can see here is um you'll see my phone is resting on my uh plain air box there and that's because i took uh, the picture that you're looking at in the left hand corner of the screen and basically i was using that to frame in the area that i wanted to actually fit onto my canvas so um, this gave me an idea as to, you know, where my edges were going to be and uh, how uh, high up and, uh, uh, you know, at the top of the canvas and uh, what I wanted to have at the lower portion of the canvas. Where Basically where I was setting up where my horizon line was going to be. And you do not want that to be directly in the center of your canvas. So... There's kind of like a lot going on there. So if you can see in the uh, picture in the left hand corner, there's an area where like the top of the waterfall uh, area where it goes back into the woods, there was like this glow in the distance. And um, I really liked that. And I tried to capture that as best I could uh, in this uh, plein air session that we were doing. I'm not 100% sure if I was truly successful capturing that glow. I tried the best I could um, with the colors that I had with me. Um, and I had a good amount of colors with me, but not every single color in the rainbow. So um, later on, I did. Uh, we did go to an art shop in Florence and I was able to pick up a few extra colors. And so those colors, when, uh, when we take this pitch particular painting into the studio and improve upon it, I should be able to get that glow that I was seeing there um, on that particular day. At least that's the plan. So here you can see I, uh, I drew my uh, drawing in with uh, using uh, Asphaltum and a smaller brush. And I pretty much put in, you know, where basically where I wanted my trees um, I put in the rocks, um, and they those rocks were not level. They were at an angle, so I tried to capture that a little bit. Um, it's a little difficult because you try to put everything kind of, you know, straight and center on your canvas, but uh, um, I did put those rocks at an angle. And then I went right into putting my darks in. And the colors that I'm using there for the darks was a mixture of ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light and a little bit of black uh, to uh, darken that color up. And then as I wanted a lighter value, I would just eliminate the black and then slowly decrease the amount of ultramarine blue that I was having. So 
you get more of a yellowish green green out of it and then um, for the highlight areas I had a tube of permanent yellow green um, and I that's what you can see me putting on right there it's this uh, permanent yellow green it's a much lighter uh, green uh, very very yellowish in color I love using it um, you can add uh, asphaltum or uh, blue a darker blue to that and you can really vary the values of that particular green and it looks uh, very natural it's a very natural looking green so I really like using it and uh, and this particular painting um, because it is a waterfall um, I do get a little anxious because in the past, um, uh, years ago, I used to approach the uh, a waterfall uh, with a uh, kind of like a Bob Ross technique. You know, I would use the fan brush for the water, cascading water. And over the years, I have uh, progressed away from that particular technique only because... Um, those looks that particular look in a painting is uh, that bob ross type of look um that is not a i mean although it's beautiful it is not the kind of uh, aesthetic that you're looking for in a fine art type of painting um for example you're not going to see a bob ross type painting hanging in a gallery uh, to be sold along with other beautiful landscape paintings because there's just a particular kind of look to that uh, it's more of a uh, artsy um, kind of look um, and again nothing against the Bob Ross style of painting it's a beautiful style of painting it's just not conducive to the type of paintings that sell within a gallery so I tend to stay away from that and I approach my techniques a little differently. So for the water, I'm going to use a slightly different technique um, than what I had used in the past. And I'm never 100% sure how it's going to look. So because of that, I, I always get a little, a little anxious when I'm doing a waterfall. Uh, again, also with the rocks, um, my approach to rocks, the particular technique that I like to use, I like to uh, basically just go after the big shapes. So when I'm doing a rock, I'll make like a square particular shape with my brush. And then on the one edge of that square, I'll put like a triangular shape uh, with my brush. So I'll have a square and a triangle touching each other and then off of that triangle I might put a rectangle in there so I'm always uh, my rocks are always going to have uh, basically just major shapes to it and then I'm going to uh, paint a darker value or a lighter value along the bottom of the rock or the top of the rock to shade it out and when you do that you'll see that it really brings it out as a rock and you can get some depth to it so that is the approach that I use when I'm doing rocks uh, whether they be in the water whether they be water going over the top of the rocks it doesn't really matter and uh, you can pretty much go any size you want using that technique depending on the size of your brush so on this particular painting I did not bring out the larger brush um, I pretty much stuck with a medium sized brush throughout the whole thing. So here you can see I'm trying to capture that glow that I was seeing in the distance of this particular uh, uh, scenery that we were at uh, trying to paint. And um, it was interesting because I would look at other the other uh, people I was painting with and uh, um, they had approached this a little a bit differently than I did, which it always amazes me how everybody sees a particular scene or that you're looking at differently than you do. And uh, so you hear I was trying to capture that glow. And again, I'm not 100% sure I was truly successful with the colors I was using. Whether it's, um, it may be the temperature, because I like to 
because that's like that glow is a highlight type of color. Um, it's a, well, it's not a, a type of color. It actually it's a highlight, and um, the school of thought on highlights and shadows is your highlights are going to be a cool color, and that seems very contradictive to what one would think. Because you're thinking a bright color, you know, that uh, like when there's a glow, someone says there's a glow, you associate that with um, warmth. But in uh, but you really want to attack your highlights with cool colors. So I may have uh, not gone cool enough with my uh, with my colors here, and that could be one of the reasons why I did not achieve that. Uh, the look I was going for, um, for the like, for example, for the shadows, I'm using an asphaltum. I'm using uh, a little bit of red in there, and um, then I was uh, just changing the values up, depending on you know whether it was dark or light uh, on the particular uh, rock. So those shadow areas are warm in color. So as a result, when you have those shadow areas up against your light areas you're going to see that contrast so you want that warmth against the cool now what ends up happening and a lot of you may notice this in your own paintings if you take a cool color you're painting on like cool highlights and you put that up against cool shadows you will find that your colors get chalky um, that's because you're you got uh, you got your yellows and your titanium whites and you're using them throughout your whole painting and that will tend to make your painting a lot more chalky whereas if you take warm co colors and put them up against more warm warmer colors your painting will tend to get more in the uh, muddy aspect of the painting a lot of people will think that it's because the the different colors that they're using and mixing them up and you know they're getting a, a muddy color out of it that's not necessarily uh, uh, false but the reason is not just because of the combination of colors it's because it's a combination of warm colors all mixed together and that will give you that muddy color to um, and value to your painting so you always want to vary your temperatures based on your highlights and your shadows and uh, we will go more into detail on that along the way uh, as, uh, as I show you each painting that we're doing. Uh, that explanation is something that I will just constantly be touching upon. So eventually, you know, if you don't get it in this video, you'll get it in the next one and the one after that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just the way I like to uh, uh, paint. And... It's been proven over time that this, you know, your highlights, if you use cooler colors and you use warmer colors for your shade, your shading areas, uh, your shadows, that it is a much more aesthetically pleasing painting. So uh, it works. So that's why uh, I like to use it. So here I am working on the rocks. And again, I apologize for the, my big fat elbow being in the way. I did become quite... Um, uh, <laughs> uh, conscious of that throughout the video process for the remainder of the videos that I did and so I, uh, I, I really tried to make sure that my elbow was not in front of the camera instead of uh, uh, you know instead of my painting so that way you could uh, enjoy the painting process as opposed to just looking at my elbow so I again apologize <laughs> I apologize for that I did try to uh, uh, remove all of the elbow shots from this particular video so we should not see too much of that after this so here I am putting in the uh, uh, the darker areas for the trees and some uh, highlights al along the the trees and for the highlights I was using a uh, yellow ochre um, mixed in with the uh, yellow cad light and uh, you know because uh, when I'm working on these paintings of the the I discovered that if you stay away from your white and you save that 
for the very last part of your painting when you're getting into your details of your highlights and your shadows uh, you'll get a, uh, a much better mix of colors so um, yeah in, in it's better it's better to use the, the you know your yellows uh, and uh, your blues to uh, or the asphaltum is a great color uh, by Robertson uh, Robinson paints uh, they do a beautiful asphaltum and uh, if you use those colors as opposed to your whites or your blacks um, uh, you'll get a, uh, a much better look to your painting so I try to keep uh, try to keep back on the on the whites till the end and again it prevents it from being uh, chalky so here I am working on the the rocks you can see here I am putting in some yellow uh, for the uh, lighter areas of the rocks and you go along the bottom uh, with a much darker value uh, to give it the look like the rock is kind of like you know hanging over the edge of the rock underneath it so um, yeah it's just, it's a it's just a balance of going back and forth between your lights and your darks and if you mess that up no worries you just paint over it. Uh, you just you can keep going over it, and and if it, the, your paint starts getting a little thick, scrape it off with your palette knife because you can then just paint over that again. It's not a big deal. Uh, when you're out playing air painting, remember you're only trying to capture the essence of what it is that you're looking at. You want to uh, try to capture a a really good reference. So when you go back into the studio which we will be doing with this particular painting. Uh, you have an idea as to, you know, what it was you were looking at out there. Now I also took, like I said, you know, you can see it in the left hand corner. I also took a photo of that area. So I will also be using that as a reference while I'm doing this painting in the studio. And uh, so I'm looking forward to um, uh, that particular series of paintings. I'm in the process now of uh, videotaping the first plein air painting that I did, which I do not have a video of. Um, so you'll see that painting for the first time in my new series, um, um, which I'll call uh, From Plain Air to Studio. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I should be wrapping that one up at the end of the week. So here you can see, um, you can almost see how the rocks are coming uh, coming together here. You can see the top platform and then there's like a big flat area and then there's the uh, a lower platform and uh, so yeah and it's like I said it's just a combination of different shapes you just you, you know your squares your triangles your rectangles and just connecting them all together in such a way where you don't have a um, similar look you know, uh, you know, you don't want all of your rocks to look exactly the same because in nature nothing is the same. In nature, everything there is no, uh, you know, every rock is different from every rock. So you don't want to paint, you know, a very similar looking rock next to each other. It just it doesn't look right. So and if you do do that, it's not a big deal. You just change one of them so it looks different from the other one. Um, that's the beautiful thing about oil paints. You can really manipulate it around and change it and uh, get a different look each and every time you apply your brush to the canvas. So I, um, I was happy with the greens that I was using on this particular painting. Uh, again, it's just, it's really all my greens were other than the um, permanent yellow green that came out of the tube all those other greens are just a mixture of the ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow light and uh, here I am putting in the waterfall you can see I'm just it wasn't a huge waterfall it was just like a trickle so um, there was not a lot of water to really deal with here um, and I just used a small brush and I and it's a mixture of <laughs> excuse me and it's a mixture of titanium white and uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow light in there. Uh, you never use a straight white. 
And I also had um, some uh, cerulean blue I used to mix in there with, uh, to give the water a, a bluish uh, hue in certain areas. Um, yeah, because water is not complete. It's not, nothing in, in the world is really 100% white. There is a color to it. Uh, you can take a, what you think is white and hold it up against to, uh, next to something else that's white, and you will see that they're not really white. Uh, they're uh, an off, you know, yellow, creamy, you know, uh, it's just an off color. Uh, and that's pretty much how everything is in life. So you try to add whatever you can to your white to make it look as close as possible to what it is that you're trying to paint. So I was uh, getting near the end of the painting here and I was just filling in some uh, shadow areas around those rocks. There was a bunch of boulders near the bottom and I was uh, uh, working around those and the only thing I had left basically at the bottom of that painting was a, uh, there was a large boulder that was kind of sticking up um, in front and I, I tried to paint that in. I did not, um, I don't think I got the, uh, the lights and the shadows on that particular boulder uh, in the proper places so it really didn't uh, read as a boulder uh, in front of you. It almost, it almost melded in with that uh, flat area that was in front of that. Um, but then again, we will fix that in the studio and uh, make it look exactly how I want it to look. And again, like I said, when you are out doing your plein air painting, uh, you're not trying to accomplish a masterpiece, you know, right there on the spot uh, in an hour and a half. Not saying you can't. Sometimes it comes together nicely and you have a finished product right there, ready to be framed and hung up, um, you know, but that's very rare. Uh, uh, this particular painting did not fall into that category, I don't think, and um, it will require some further work. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting in the studio and working on it. So, um, yeah. It's, uh, I was very happy with how it came out. Most of the colors that I was using um, in this particular palette, uh, I had the titanium white, I had the cadmium yellow light, I next to that was the yellow ochre, and then I had a cad red. Um, next to that I had cerulean blue, I had ultramarine blue, then I had my asphaltum, and the ivory black. And those were the colors that I was using, or I had on my palette that I was mixing together to create the various colors that, uh, that, I, was, that I was painting. Here's that boulder I was talking about where I was trying to... Uh, uh, give it the appearance of, uh, you know, jutting out in front of me there, in front of that flat area. And um, I believe if I, if I touch that up with a little bit more highlight um, on the one side and some more shade on the other, I should be able to give that a very three-dimensional look, and it will look uh, and bring it forward a lot more than what it is uh, at the moment. So I may um, change uh, some of the values or the colors 
uh, on the rocks above. I'm not sure yet. Um, I do like the way it looks now. And uh, but when you look at the um, if you look at the picture on the left, there's a lot of greenery on that big rock. And the way I painted it, I painted it um, uh, a lot more plain, not as much vegetation. Um, so I may add some more vegetation to those rocks up the top, uh, give it a mossier look to it, kind of give it a, uh, you know, a humid, uh, foresty uh, mood. And um, I think that'll go well with that glow that's in the background. I kind of give it a uh, almost a mysterious look about it. So I think that's something I'm going to try to uh, achieve with that in the studio. So all in all, this was a, um, uh, a beautiful uh, uh, day that we had painting. Um, the uh, mosquitoes were a little treacherous that day. I did get a few bites, nothing major. And, uh, but all in all, um, it went very nicely. And I uh, was happy to be out there in uh, the Italy countryside uh, painting. Um, the whole time we were there, the weather was beautiful. Uh, it was around 80 degrees or warmer than that. And uh, so we really did enjoy uh, being outdoors uh, most of the week, doing a lot of plein air painting. It was a lot of fun. So uh, if you like this video, make sure you uh, hit the like button. If you have any questions uh, or comments, uh, make sure you leave those in the comment section below. And uh, smash, that, uh, smash that notification bell. And that way um, you'll be notified of any new videos that I put up. Um, should be putting up another uh, plein air video uh, next week. Or um, you may see the uh, beginning of the uh, From Plein Air to Studio uh, video. And um, so, yeah. Uh, again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do do that. And... Uh, um, I uh, always look forward to uh, uh, seeing who my new subscribers are, seeing who's out there. So if you're interested in learning how to paint, uh, make sure you give me a call. I do coaching and uh, maybe we can take your paintings to the next level. So until then, uh, goodbye. Are you interested in learning how to oil paint? You don't know where to begin or start? and need a little help along the way? Well, no matter what level of artistic ability you're at, whether you are capable of painting something along the lines like this, or you can't even draw a stick figure, give me a call at area code 607-481-9442. Let me coach you and teach you how to become the best artist that you can be. Let me take your paintings to the next level. Also, make sure you visit my website at www.kennethbrandt.com and make sure you join my email newsletter. Again, that's area code 607-481-9442. And let me help you become the best you can be.